Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News, Tax Time Guide, Minimize Cyber Footprints, Protect Personal Information Online. Yeah, good luck. I mean, but first, an attempt at a joke, I apologize in advance. Apparently, everyone was scared of George V because he had great naval powers, which I thought was amazing. I can't imagine anybody being scared of my navel. I mean, what can you do with your navel anyways? Except gaze at it. And even that hurts your neck after a while. It must have been some kind of sorceress or hypnosis related navel power. George V walking out onto the battlefield, removing his beer belly armor, proclaiming, Behold my navel! And tremble before its navel power. Gaze at the navel and become powerless to take action. He must have had to make sure never to gaze at his own powerful navel for too long, lest his navel gazing result in him succumbing to his own navel power. IR 2022-60, March 16th, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today urged people to stay resolute against ongoing scams and schemes. There's links to scams and schemes here by properly securing computers, tablets, and phones. Solid cybersecurity protection and scam recognition is vital to reduce the threat of identity theft inside and outside the tax system. The IRS works closely with the Security Summit. There's a link to the Security Summit here, a partnership with state tax agencies and the, the private sector tax industry to help protect taxpayer information and defend against identity theft. They're just like the Justice League, kind of, but with identity theft. But in any case, taxpayers and tax professionals, there's links to those items here, can take, take steps to help in this effort by doing things like minimizing cybersecurity footprints and recognizing common scams and schemes. Below are 10 tips to help minimize exposure to fraud and identity theft. Safeguard personal data. So obviously safeguarding the personal data would be a step towards securing it. Provide a social security number, for example, only when necessary. So obviously we don't want to be giving the social security number to basically anybody only when necessary. However, we have had the social security number like since the time we've been born and we've given it to every medical and financial institution and employer and so on since that time. So I would think at this point in time in the digital age, the social security number, you know, is likely to be compromised. So it's, it'd be nice, you know, you know, you almost think we'd need to go to something else where they change the number possibly periodically instead of having the same number. I know that would be kind of tedious, but in any case, Obviously, we don't want to give the social security a number out. Uh, out. Uh, so there's that. So only offer personal information or conduct financial transactions on sites that have been verified as reputable encrypted websites. Protect personal information. Treat personal information like cash. Don't hand it out to just anyone. Social security numbers, credit card numbers, bank and even utility account numbers can be used to help steal a person's money or open new accounts. So again, this is a lot of this information that we could see as basically somewhat mundane, especially in a time frame of not really obviously credit card numbers or social security numbers, but things that can help people to basically uh, log in or try to hack into passwords and this kind of stuff, birthdays, you know, where, where you live, obviously addresses and so on and so forth. You would think uh, be in, a, in an age where everybody's on social media, that that kind of information is more difficult to keep secure and for a vast amount of people than it once was, uh, you know, before that point in time. So, but all that kind of stuff, once it builds up, can, you know, lead people to be able to crack passwords and this kind of stuff as well. So use strong passwords. So that leads to the next one, which is, of course, you probably don't want to have the password just being, you know, your city you live in or something like that, or, you know, a common password because those kind of things are the kind of things that can be picked up on uh, the internet these days. So you want the strong passwords, ones that you generally, unless you're a crazy person or a very talented person, you can't even remember and you might need some kind of software to help you to populate all your tax, all your passwords because you have to put in these strong passwords and so on. So use a password phrase or series of words that will be easy for you to remember. Again, for most people to make a strong password, even with a like like a 
good memory trick type of thing. Not usually the easiest thing to do. You might want to use other kind of software. Maybe they can help to safeguard your passwords and still make strong passwords. I use at least 10 characters. 12 is ideal for most home users. Mix letters, numbers, and special characters. So obviously some of those are some tricks that you could put in there, putting numbers and you know, you might have a system of putting numbers in place of some certain letters or some characters in place of some letters and so on that can help, you know, make possibly more memorized pass, memorizable passwords easier to remember. Uh, try to be uh, unpredictable. Don't use names, birth dates, or common words. Don't use the same password for many accounts and avoid sharing them. So again, that, seems, that starts to get unmanageable quickly, given the fact that everything you log into from your email address to your, you know, every social, to your 5,000 social media accounts and whatnot needs a password. So that means you might need another management system. So keep passwords in a secure place or use a password management tool. So that, that, that would be something you might want to look into that management tool. Uh, set pa password and encryption protection for a wireless network. If a home or business Wi-Fi is unsecure, it allows any computer within range to access the wireless network and potentially steal information from connected devices. Whenever it is, whenever it is an option for password protected account, you should, should also opt for multi-factor authentication process. Multi-factor authentication is critical to protecting your password. So obviously we all want everything on the Wi-Fi and accessible at this point in time. But of course that creates another like node in the system or whatever for nefarious people to do nefarious things. And we know there's a lot of nefarious people doing nefarious things. So that's how it is. Avoid phishing scams. The easiest way for criminals to steal sensitive data is simply to ask for it. IRS urges people to learn to recognize phishing emails. There's a link to that here. Calls or texts that pose as familiar organizations such as banks, credit card companies, or even the IRS. So we've all probably thought about or seen many phishing emails at this point in time. Notice that if you if you're not in an environment where you're constantly inundated with these phishing emails then they you, you can imagine people that 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 they would be they would be su subject to those phishing emails you can see that how you could easily basically respond to the phishing emails in in that area so certain groups like younger people and possibly older people in particular or people coming uh, that didn't have wi-fi before possibly people coming into the country or something that didn't have access to all this phishing email stuff are most likely more susceptible and of course sometimes the phishing emails get more uh more precise when they're just trying to shotgun the phishing email they, they look somewhat generic and we've all gotten used to that at this point in time but if they try to actually target a smaller group of people then the phishing emails can still be pretty effective even to people that have been inundated with phishing emails for the last 20 years or something so keep sensitive data safe and uh, be aware that an unsolicited email with a request to download an attachment or click on a url could ap appear to come from someone that you know like a friend work college or a uh, tax professional if their email has been spoofed or um, compromised so we've all probably seen this kind of thing at this point in time this this you know a long time ago was the the thing they'd steal someone's email and then they try to send out a message with someone else's email on it and that would give you more kind of personalization towards that email so we still got to be aware of that especially as tax professionals when we're trying to pick up clients or anybody trying to pick up clients and you need to have some degree of being able to contact people that you haven't talked to before and whatnot but you got to be uh, careful with that don't uh, assume internet ad advertisements, pop-up ads, or emails are from reputable companies. If an ad or offer looks too good to be true, take a moment to check out the company behind it. So clearly if there's any, any pop-ups or anything, those are gonna be something that you wanna check into more if they're interesting to you by basically doing more research on it. So download, never download quote security in quote software from a pop-up ad. So this was an old thing that that they uh, that they still do. I, basically, they they infect your computer in essence with a pop-up ad, which is kind of a form of infection of the computer. And then the pop-up ad acts like it's security software, telling you that you got viruses that their software can save, but their software is the one that violated 
your computer by downloading them when you didn't want it in the first place and then they're trying then they're going to help you by stopping the other so it doesn't that that's not how things should work so no no don't do business like that and it doesn't work anyways because the, the whole their whole thing is wrong obviously it's going to have the wrong information coming up on it so a pervasive ploy is a pop-up ad that indicates it has detected a virus on the computer the download most likely will install some type of malware reputable security software companies do not advertise in this manner so obviously if you were a reputable uh, software advisor that are trying to stop viruses you wouldn't advertise your software by giving someone a virus right you can see why a, a non-reputable company might try to do that to prove themselves hey look i infected your computer why don't you hire me to stop me from doing that again well no <laughs> you know that, uh, so use security software an antivirus program should provide protection from viruses trojans spyware and adware the irs urges everyone to use an antivirus program and always keep it up to date uh, set security software to update automatically so it can be updated as threats emerge. Educate those less experienced about online safety. Children and those less online experienced may not be fully aware of the perils of operating suspicious web pages, emails, or documents. So again, we've, we've been somewhat inundated with this for a long time now with the phishing and all this other kind of stuff. But and we're still kind of, most of us are still do not feel at all completely secure, you know, like we know everything about this stuff. But obviously people that have not had like 20 years of it being hit with, you know, phishing emails and so on, then are more susceptible. And that of course means younger people, older people, and people that possibly are, are coming into the country, possibly that didn't have as much kind of internet stuff uh, and prior to that probably possibly foreign language speakers. So teens and younger users can put themselves at risk by leaving a trail of personal information for con otters to follow. Backup files. No system is completely secure. Copy important files, including federal and state tax returns into removable disks or backup drives and cloud storage, store disks, drives, and any paper copies in secure locked locations. So, so you want to make sure you back up your system. So that if you're if there is a crash or something you got a backup either on an external hard drive or on the cloud know the risk of public wi-fi connection to public wi-fi is convenient and often free but it may not be safe hackers and cyber criminals can easily steal personal information from these networks always use a virtual private network when connecting to the public wi-fi so that's when the vpn the vir virtual private network becomes uh, more useful when you're on that public wi-fi and of course you want to be more careful there and possibly not get into any personal kind of stuff like bank accounts and whatnot when you're on uh, public Wi-Fi. Review ID Theft Central, designed to improve online access to information on identity theft. It serves taxpayers, tax professionals, and businesses. The IRS doesn't initiate contact with taxpayers by email, text messages, or social media channels to request personal or financial information. So if you get an email or messages or social media in particular, if, the, if you get a tweet that says, I'm the IRS, you know, give me your social security number, then the IRS doesn't usually t make threatening tweets like that, at least not to personal people like individuals. So anyways, generally the IRS first mails a paper bill to the person who owes taxes. In some special situations, the IRS will call or come to the home or business. People should be alert to scammers posing as the IRS to steal personal information. So obviously impersonating a threatening organization, entity, business or government entity like the IRS is one way that uh, that the fraudsters can try to do nefarious things. So you got to be aware that the IRS doesn't typically typically do that. They work like a big bureaucratic agency. They work very slowly, mundanely. They send letters. You're typically well aware of what they're going to do like way before they do it so there are ways to know if it's really the irs calling or knocking on someone's door taxpayers can find answers to questions forms and instructions and easy to use tools online at irs.gov irs.gov the irs website they can use the resources to get help when it's needed at home at work or on the go this news release is part of a series called the tax time guide 
There's a link to the tax time guide here, a resource to help taxpayers file an accurate tax return. Additional help is available in publication 17, your federal tax income tax. There's a link to that and other links here, and there'll be a link to this in the description.